sun and we are doing the emoji challenge. Today I'm doing whipped cream. <laughs> One, two, one, two. Finally, we're back. And man, have I got good news for you guys. This might actually turn out to be the most positive show I've ever done. Don't get me wrong, our culture is still free-falling at the speed of an asteroid, but I got a lot of good stuff to tell you about today. I was in Florida last month. That was an experience in itself. You know, there's an artist who just passed whose work is down there, and I... I'm telling you, it was one of the coolest, most intricate art installations I've ever seen in person. This guy spent 50 years recreating the entire Ringling Brothers circus operation. He, he did all this with miniature figures, 3,800 square feet, everything from the train station to the cooking tent to the entrance, just a massive undertaking. I got to show you some of his stuff later. It makes you think about the effort people used to put into things, the craftsmanship and how people celebrated real accomplishments. Not like what you see today. Here, yeah, make sense of this. <laughs> now, did you hear the reaction to that? This is a kid on stage tapping his head. I'm not exaggerating. He leans into the audience, then taps his head with his fingers, and the crowd loses their mind. I mean, you got to see this. Oh, my God. Is that ready? Is that ready? Wait, is this the eye roll thing? Hold on. Let me, because... Oh, my God. This is incredible. I tried doing it. I, I almost... No. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here we go. It's it's the strong. eye roll of TikTok. Three, two, one. This is the new Elvis. <laughs> It's literally the same reaction Elvis Presley got when he took the stage in the 50s. Two, one. This is all you got to do now. No singing, no dancing, no guitar playing, nothing. Just walk on stage and pretend to have a mini seizure. Instant star. You ain't nothing but a... Oh, man. See, what, what I think's happening is these TikTok stars are doing shows now where they go on stage and twirl their arms like they do in their bedroom and their followers show up to these and lose their mind over it. Like, is there anything of value that the youth consumes these days? It's idiocracy in full form. Where does it go from here? World tours, right? Lead roles in Hollywood films. I mean, at this point, does that really sound that far-fetched? I was watching Joy B. Tunes, and I was absolutely amazed by the fact that all these f***ing people on TikTok just doing the stupidest shit instead of trying to be original. Be original, for f***'s sake. F*** this viral bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? Forget the viral be original. You deserve it. Look, I'm with you, Mr. Kringle. I feel you, brother. Be original. Believe it or not, the pendulum is starting to swing. Like I said at the top of the show, I said I had some good news for you. Well, the great news is my prayers have been answered. Now, if you've been following my journey here, many of you know I went to church recently to see what sort of plan God has for these TikTokers. <sighs> Jesus, before we get started, is there anything we can do about these TikTokers? I mean, you are seeing this, right? Look what your children have been doing lately. And it's not just kids, it's their parents. And people praise this behavior. There's got to be some concern on your end, isn't there? And I got to tell you, the turnaround time was pretty fast because I woke up to some great news the other day. That's right. The latest TikTok trend, TikTokers are now filming themselves getting vasectomies. 
<laughs> I mean, this has always been the dream, right? How do we get them to stop breeding? Well, they're stopping themselves on their own now. I mean, this is the greatest TikTok trend of all time. Not only should we be celebrating, we should be encouraging this. I just got a vasectomy. I'm in no pain right now. I'm walking. I filmed the entire thing. Face up, of course. Yeah, no pinch here. Oh. That was not nearly as bad as I just thought it was going to be. Oh, yeah, I, th I thought it was going to be like I'm losing a ball. <laughs> I'm giving you a front row seat to my procedure. Join me. We want this to continue. They're cutting their bloodlines off. I mean, that's more than I could have asked for. Now, if only this would trend in Silicon Valley. If that were to happen, the country would be well on its way to recovery, let me tell you. That's a prayer for another visit. Anyway, before we start the show, got to thank Raycon for supporting it today. These are the Raycon Everyday Wireless Earbuds. You know, ever since I got that news that the vasectomy challenge was trending on TikTok, I've been listening to more upbeat music on them. It's like there's a light shining through now. There's hope for the future. We got to keep that snip count up, though, you know? Anyway, before I was listening to Anima from Tool on these things, which really should be the theme song for this show, but I got to tell you, for the size of these headphones and how heavy that album is, it sounds great on these things. I like the tap thing they got on these. You just tap them to turn the volume up and down. There's, there's all kinds of things you could do with these. You could customize the sound profiles. Oh, I got some good use out of these the other day. Listen to this. I, I was in the store the other day, right? I'm in line, and I'm trapped with these two people behind me who apparently ran into each other at the store, and they're talking to each other like they're across the street. Yet they're standing right in front of each other, talking as loud as they possibly could. Have you ever seen people that do this? How you doing, Bob? Hey, you know, Ken stopped by the other day. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm standing a foot in front of these people. My ears are ringing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Susie's going for her bachelor's degree. Like, why do I need to hear that on volume 10? Ugh. Yeah, see, before I used to just leave the store, but now I just pop the earbuds in, crank them, and they're gone. You just drown them out. And they stay in, too. That's the other good thing about these. That's crucial. <laughs> anyway, go to buyraycon.com today and use code JOEYBVS15 to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's JOEYBVS15 at buyraycon.com to score 15% off buyraycon.com, code JOEYBVS15. All right, let's get back to the good news that I said I had. I got, I got more. This is actually great news, believe it or not. The great news is I am now completely banned from TikTok. That's right. Got my discharge papers last week confirming my release, which I will be framing and displaying on my mantle. I mean, this is a badge of honor. I'm humbled by this. And, you know, I figured what better place to give my acceptance speech than right here today on the show. Let's put some ceremonial music on for this. What do you say? This is a big moment for me. Whew. Okay. So many emotions. I'll keep it short and sweet. Basically, I just want to thank everyone at TikTok from top to bottom, from the CEOs to the content moderators who can't change a tire on a car, for honoring the series of videos I've been uploading to their platform over the years documenting the company and its users' contribution to the downfall of society. You know, the platform that allows people to dress up as Holocaust victims, uh, dance in front of dying loved ones in hospital rooms, film themselves during car accidents, I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for acknowledging me as someone who has held a mirror up to your morally bankrupted souls. I wear this cancellation as a badge of honor in the fight against idiocracy and the demoralization of our society. So to everyone at TikTok, from the feminists to the men with comparable testosterone levels to that of elementary school students, 
Thank you. <sighs> Boy, held back tears. Very emotional show today. Oh, I got to show you some of this fan art I got the other day. This is pixel fan art by Bon Chill 381 <laughs> Look, I look like a burnt pierogi. This might be my, this might be my favorite thing anyone's ever sent me. Thank you. Speaking of sending things, I finally set up an address for the show because like I said a few episodes ago, I get I get so many messages from people. I can't read everything. And, you know, people write some pretty heartfelt things, but, but I just hate that it's all digital on a cloud somewhere. It's not the same as actually holding a letter in my hand from somebody. It's more personal. Everything's so impersonal today. I mean, people buy music today, no album art to hold in your hand and go through while you're listening. No video stores to browse, digital books, digital maps. Does anyone call their mom anymore? <laughs> I, I just feel like the soul has been taken out of everything with this obsession with technology. I think it's all a mistake. Anyway, if you want to send something the old school way, you could send it to Joey B vs. The World or Joey B Tunes, however you want to address it, at 178 Columbus Ave, 237190, New York, New York, 10023. All right, yeah, so I don't know why I keep seeing this everywhere, but I keep getting these videos of Billie Eilish popping up on my phone. She's a pop singer, that much I know, but they're never of her singing. It's always these weird videos she makes where it revolves around her boobs bouncing up and down. Oh my God, I know. Because it happens to me. And then I can't remember what we're talking about. This distracts me. Oh my God, I know. Just calm down, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then it's her out in public everywhere, flopping them all around. But she does this thing where it's like she pretends like that's not her intention. But it obviously is. This is what she does now. I mean, I mean, I don't know anything about her, so maybe she's always done this. But for some reason, man, all of a sudden, I, I see these videos popping up all the time now. I mean, she's throwing the guitar. I mean, I mean, these are mating calls. Titties was falling out. Somebody's got to step in. I mean, she's humping the air. Like what? <laughs> This is what the youth consumes. It's just there's never any kind of like value. I don't get it, man. I mean, you got a whole audience of people who watch uh, women lick microphones. <laughs> I mean, remember the video of the girl who, who I did about the girl who licks the microphone for a living? <laughs> Yeah, apparently there's a whole community of microphone lickers out there. I had no idea. Yeah, they're all mad at me now. <laughs> they banded together. <laughs> the people that watch this stuff are the best, though. This one goes, wow, you're really contributing a lot to society with this vitriolic dog shit you call content. Meanwhile, you go to her page and she's having an orgasm over a video of a girl licking a microphone. Because, you know... This type of content's a much higher standard. <laughs> this is how nuts these people are. Then I'm like, does your family know you fall asleep to girls licking and breathing in the microphones? And if so, what steps are they taking to rehabilitate your mental illness? So then the microphone licker steps in to defend her honor and goes, who hurt you? Mommy and daddy not give you enough love growing up? So sad. Yeah, from the girl who posts half-naked photos of herself on Twitter. Talk about compensating for a lack of love in your childhood. Good lord, a lot of projection going on here. They hate when you hold a mirror and a flashlight up to them. When they know you can see the emptiness in what they do, that's when they get crazy. 
maybe one day someone will love you enough so you don't have to come online and be a nasty little to make yourself feel better. Ooh, I really took a licking there. The attack of the microphone lickers. <laughs> Who would have thought? If you would have if you would have told me in 1996 that one day I would be a villain amongst a community of people who lick microphones for a living, I would say, give me all your drugs. I'm throwing them out. I mean, what is happening here on this planet? <laughs> what are people consuming their time with? It's never anything that includes any type of unique ability. I love makeup! Bye, Chanel! Everything's upside down, man. Everything's inverted. You got Will Smith. He puts out an apology video four months after the fact. I mean, I know I'm late on this, but I was just thinking about this the other day. Like, this is a damage control video. I mean, I don't even acknowledge this as an apology. So I will, I will say to you, um, Chris, I apologize to you. Uh, my behavior was unacceptable. I mean, I mean, this is four months later, and he's dressed like he's headed out for a round of golf. I mean, he, three camera angles. I mean, this is, this is like Bill Clinton's Monica Lewinsky apology. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part for which I am solely and completely responsible. I promise you I am... Uh, deeply devoted and committed to putting light and love and joy into the world. I must put it right. And I am prepared to do whatever it takes to do so. This isn't how people communicate. This whole like sending things out online and writing Instagram posts. I mean, like, dude, it's like you're just burying yourself. Jada had nothing to do with it. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. Um. Yeah, there's, there's just no. I mean, you're living with the villain from Snow White. About Oscar night, my deepest hope is that these two intelligent, capable men have an opportunity to heal, talk this out, and reconcile. And then she, and she gets on her show talking about we're healing. We're healing. Anyone that talks like that, like, I don't want them in my life. That is the most phoniest language. It's healing that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. At this point, Will Smith should find the guy that Walter White used to erase his identity and move to Alaska. Just start over, dude. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. Um... You're burying yourself. Stop it. We ride together. We, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for, for life. <laughs> These people. Anyway, so I got to tell you about my Florida experience because because I realized something down there. Um, before we get into that, I got to thank our newest sponsor, ExpressVPN. Um, if you don't want your internet service provider to see your online activity, you need this. And I'm telling you, I'm all about this right now because you got to figure the things people send me and the things I got to research to make these videos and do this show, I'm surprised I haven't gotten a phone call from my internet provider. Like, dude, what are you doing on there? Like, you know how many furry videos and weird websites I had to go on just to prepare for that interview on the last show? I mean, I guarantee you I'm on some watch list right now just because of this show. <laughs> I wish I had this before. Anyway, I'm using ExpressVPN now, so, so nobody could see my activity anymore. You could clear your browsing history all you want, incognito mode, whatever you think works, but none of that keeps your internet provider from seeing what you're doing. Plus, it stops them from selling your information to ad companies. 
What it does is it reroutes your internet connection through ExpressVPN secure servers so your ISP can't see your activity. All your information's encrypted 100%. It runs in the background. You just tap one button and you're protected. It's easy. ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, phones, computers, your smart TV. Just get this thing, man. Everyone's always trying to lurk around and steal your information. It, it's so gross. Protect your online activity activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash joeybvs, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash Joey B V S expressvpn.com slash Joey B V S to learn more. All right, let's get to the good stuff here. I, I, I got to tell you about my Florida trip here. Um, a lot of funny things happen, man. You know, you know how I feel about social media and technology. I, I just think that I, I think it's a mistake. <laughs> I think we're going in the wrong direction. Um, I, I believe there's a lot of people out there who feel the same way, but man, I, I got to tell you, I, I saw the culmination of it. I was visiting a friend down there and she lives in an apartment where she can't get into her own apartment without an app. You need an app on your phone to get into your house. There's no key. There's no backup key, nothing. So if your phone dies, you're fucked. If someone steals your phone, you're fucked. And then you got to contact the complex and they got to open it for you. But what are you going to do at three in the morning? I mean, you're going to call who? Who are you going to call at three in the morning? I mean, it just seems like it's just like a, a such that they're creating more problems. Guys, that's a convenience, but it's not convenient. So I'm in the apartment and we're heading out and then her phone dies. So now we got to sit and wait. 10 minutes until her phone charges back up before she could lock the door. I mean, why are we doing this to people? Nobody wants this. It creates so many problems. I, I, it reminds me of a time when I was in Las Vegas. Uh, there was a new hotel casino that was built by the MGM. My dad and I get in there at what, maybe two in the morning, right? And we go to check in and there's no check-in desk. It's all computers in the middle of a lobby. And you're supposed to go on there and check in yourself. Now, of course, half of them don't work. Then you got, so you got people there standing with their, their arms up in the air, you know, and maybe there's like two people there that work there that are, that can help these people. I try to scan my ID. It doesn't work. I try to scan my passport. It doesn't work. I can't get in. My dad's able to get in. Right. And then, of course, he comes back and the, the key doesn't work, you know, so now he's got to wait in line for help. And there is no line, by the way. It's just chaos, you know. And then the lady comes over to me and then and I'm like, why are why is this even a thing here? And she goes, I didn't. She gets all defensive. It's like, I didn't put this in. And I'm like, I, I know, I know. But who would agree to this? And she's like, you'll have to talk to the so-and-so. Or like, I'm not going to make phone calls about it. I'm like, I'm just never going to stay here again. It took literally an hour for them to go into the computer. And just, it's like, you could have just checked me in at the desk, like every hotel in the world. I, I mean, like, why would you phase out the check-in desk? Like, there's things that computers can't do. You know, like, I mean, it, to just to rely on that and go, okay, just throw computers on the floor of a multi-million dollar hotel and just go like, oh, let's let, just hope it works. Hope they check in. And no one at the desk has a backup. There was no backup. It was just complete reliance on this system. That that was a failed system. I just don't get why we're doing that. I, I mean, I, I saw the saddest thing once. I was at like a little arcade on a boardwalk and I saw this old man with, with with look like his granddaughter and they walk into the arcade and you know how like they don't have the change machines anymore it's all like a card that you load up the guy's probably in his 80s or 90s he doesn't know how to do this you know and she's just standing in front up there it's it's so sad he he can't figure it out i mean the, the line's building up behind him and i had, I had to go over there and, and help the guy and i just i realized i'm like they don't care about anybody over say like the age of 50 
to troubleshoot, log in to this and that. I mean, it's just like, it's a hassle. It, half the time, it, ne- nothing, it never works. There's always an error. And all these fucking geeks that create all this shit, we're all relying on them now to run our lives. We're relying on a faulty system that they've created. Why would we do this to ourselves? You know what's going to happen when we fully rely on all this stuff. The grid shuts down and it's over. Everyone panics. It, it's over. It, it'll just it it'll just fall apart. Maybe that has to happen for us to reset and realize that we we, we this was all a mistake. I thought we had it all figured out before. Everything worked. Remember when your phone worked? <laughs> when you had a house phone. I have one now, by the way. I got one installed because I'm tired of just not being able to finish a conversation with someone on a cell phone. So I, I got a rotary phone. There's never a problem. Just like there wasn't 25, 30 years ago. Like, like I just go back to when things used to work now. Nothing needed updates. Every, like, you turn on your TV, oh, we're updating for two hours. It's like, who, like, why don't you sell something that works forever? Like, why do you need to keep adding things and change? Oh, security. Re- like, yeah, because people are going to hack into your TV. Now. Like, why are we creating things like that? Hacking in your TV, hacking into your computer, your phone. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know what we're doing anymore. Th- this is why, I mean, we used to make things that worked. There was, the people had pride in their craftsmanship. When you bought something, it lasted. Everything's plastic now. It was real craftsmanship to things. Look at the cars now. They suck. Take a look at some of the cars back from the 50s and 60s, even the 70s. I mean, they were just, like there was character to them. There's no character to these cars now. They just churn them out. Spending time to craft a beautiful car doesn't fit into the business model anymore. I always appreciate people who put time into making something good. And that's why I wanted to highlight this artist today. I wanted to, to, to shine a spotlight on this guy. His name is Howard Tibbles. And he spent 50 years making a 3,800 square foot replica of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. The entire operation. Everything from the train station that they come in on to where they cook their food, where they sleep. Yeah, where they practice all the way to the entrance to the tent. It's it's incredible. This is at the Ringling Brothers Museum in uh, Sarasota, I believe. And it makes you realize what a massive operation the circus was. I mean, they would come into town and it would be like an entire city of people. All that went into this, man. But how he complimented this by crafting all these miniature figurines. I mean, like... Nobody does stuff like this anymore. I mean, it's so cool to look at. Like all the time and dedication it took to do this. When I see stuff like this, it always makes me think of what we're, what are we doing now like this? Nothing, right? Everything's a shortcut. Everything's a shortcut. Even with uh, animation, you know, it used to be hand drawn. Every all the early Disney movies. I mean, it was, what is it, 29 frames a second. So 29 drawings in every, for every second. I mean, it was a massive undertaking to make a 90-minute make a, a full-feature animation back then. But look how beautiful the end product is. Now everything's done on a computer. I mean, the 3D looks cool and all, but it's like it loses that human touch to it. There's something to say about someone taking a, a pencil to a paper and knowing that you're watching a movie of those drawings, watching them come to life like that from mind to paper to film. To me, it's incomparable. But see, we don't do that anymore because now it's too big of an undertaking and it's going to make less money because they got to hire more people. It's always about the money now. I was walking around the museum and they have these big posters that were hand painted and and to you know to each exhibit and everything and it's like these are like these were done by amazing artists now wherever you go you'd see a flyer printed out uh, from photoshop or something you know and i'm not saying you can't do cool shit with photoshop i'm just saying 
it's it's all digital. It's like yeah, okay, well they they found a couple pictures on Google image and manipulated it. I mean, like it does not compare to somebody spending a month or more to to paint an elaborate poster to complement an event that's happening. It, there's just something about it when you're surrounded by everything that took time to make or prepare. It makes you feel like you're involved in something big right now, larger than life. There's a human element to it. I mean, even the trains back then people took and you look inside and there's areas with couches and record players, like a cigar lounge, it's like little beds. And, it, you know, it's like they, they make it look nice. And then people wonder why they dressed up back then to go on these trains and to go out in public. Wouldn't that make you want to dress up? You take a train now. Take a train now. There's no character to it. There's nothing about it that makes it seem like, oh, this was created for a warm, nice, relaxing environment for you. Now people just wear anything. They do anything now. They wear their pajamas in the grocery store. Nobody cares. Like just nobody. Like, but but the thing is, is is like if the places you go to don't care, then why should anyone care? Because really, that's it, it's kind of hand in hand, you know. There's something to say about the craftsmanship and the time that people put into making nice things for society. I feel like there was a bit of pride to be a human being at one point. You know, I brought this up on the other show. I I watched these old these old videos taken from back in like the 1800s all the way up to like the 50s and that they recolor them and remaster them and everything. And you could see how everything's nice. Every every everything that was made was extravagant. You know, and you see all these people dressed up in their best outfits. Like I said, even if they didn't have a lot of money, they still made an attempt to wear their best clothes when they went out in public. But there you could there's just a, there's an aura about some of these people where it was almost as if like there was this collective pride in being a human being like like walking amongst their creations like look look what we've done look what we created like it's something to be proud of take a walk through downtown LA you think that's something to be proud of you're gonna dress up in a suit and go to the store no why why would you they let people on heroin just sit in front of the store shooting up they defecate on the street I mean that they, they allow all this well, what are you going to dress up for? Man, people used to have so much pride. Look look how clean it used to look back then. I mean, I'm sure not everywhere looked like that, but I mean, look what happened to Detroit. It was the number one car manufacturing uh, city in America. And now it looks like a third world country because they, they all moved out. Yeah, the entire industry moves out. Done. It just all falls apart. There was a classic car museum not too far from the, the Ringling Brothers Museum. And you could see all the way from the beginning up until maybe like the 50s and 60s and early 70s where the cars had so much character to them. Then, as, then when it starts getting to like the 80s and the 90s, and it's over. You know, it's funny. When I first walked in, there was an exhibit of cameras, stuff from the 20s all the way up until now. And it's funny, you look at, you know, and they actually had stuff from like the early nineties, like a digital camera. And it's just like, it's plastic. It's like, why is this even in here? Why are we even celebrating? You could just see the comparison from everything before then, like how much character, how, how well made it was all the way up into like this little digital camera just made out of plastic. It's like, this, this is nothing to put in behind glass, throw it out. Shouldn't be worth anything. I, I shouldn't even be looking at this right now. But just seeing all that stuff in contrast made me really appreciate the craftsmanship that people had back in the day. There's a pulse and a heartbeat behind it. I guarantee you, if you surround yourself with stuff like that, you'll see what I mean. I started collecting vinyl again. I got, I got a nice turntable I got. I got a rotary phone now. I ended up getting this this cool chrome table from the 50s with these leather chairs. Like, you know, something that you'd see at like an old school diner or nightclub or something like that. I mean, it's just, I want to start surrounding myself with things that are meaningful, that came from an idea that someone was passionate about. 
someone who made a product that they were proud of. I wish we could get back to that. That's why I feel like we do need some sort of a reset here. There needs to be some kind of a wake-up call. The soul is being removed from everything. We can do so much better than this. We have so much to offer as people. We're so creative. We have so much potential. We shouldn't be craving the things from the past to come back today. It should already be here. Could you imagine if the pride and craftsmanship continued from the 50s and beyond all the way up to today? The cool shit we would have. The cars would look incredible. See, I'd love to see what you guys think about this. Like, what's something that you'd like to see made better today? What's something that you've always admired from the past that we've lost today? I mean, there's got to be a way to inspire somebody who wants those same things, but can actually make those things and maybe inspire him or her to actually develop a small company or something where they can bring this stuff into fruition. Anyway, guys, I got to run. It was great hanging with you guys today. It was good to be back. And uh, yeah, don't forget, we got a new address for the show. 178 Columbus Ave, 237190, New York, New York, 10023. If you got questions for the show, if you want to send in a video question or a video comment or whatever, that there's uh, we have a show email at joeybshow at gmail.com. And for all the uncensored bits, get on the Patreon. The show is completely uncensored on there. I got all kinds of bonus clips and exclusive videos uh, that I make just for the Patreon. I have a mini podcast on there called The Morning Rant. A lot of good stuff on there. If you're tired of the censorship on social media, get on the Patreon. All right, guys, I love you. Great hanging with you. Talk to you soon. I mean, the volume of stupidity being uploaded to the internet by people right now is at a pace that I can't even keep up with. I'm back from part two, there's too much to discuss. And only one round, so me busting back was a must. Words and Joey, though, ain't nobody fucking with us. This clown world's getting called out, enough is enough. Everybody's got their cameras out, searching for fame. To get those likes up, grown adults, it's surely a shame. To see it all topple down, society's beyond broken now. All you gotta do is stop and look around. It seems nobody cares, they looking up or looking down. Never straight ahead to see it's all been burned down to the ground They just want a game and zone out Folks can't even go to concerts now anymore Without watching it with their phone out The brainwash them rolled out They've all lost their minds So I'm spinning old 60s records Staying lost in time They spat at it on kids And that's where they cross the line But to speak against it all Is when they're calling it a crime This is clown I mean, we are living in an alternate dimension The rules have changed Things that would have been considered blackmail footage 20 years ago is now filmed and shared on purpose. You motherfuckers need Jesus. Fuck your clown world.